Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Yes. Um, Thank you, Pam. I'd like to start welcoming everyone first. It's lovely to see you, as I can see, um, Ruth and Mum and Joe and Pam Bailey and those whose names I can see. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Ash, Sophie, Jean Marie, Hilda, Ellen, and hopefully Richard, Inna, Heather, Carmel. Welcome, everyone. It's lovely to have you. This is our new home. Um, this is going to be my beautiful office. It's still a bit of a progress, but it does have a, a lovely window with a view over the valley, but it's very misty. And it's got a view over the orchards. We've got beautiful oranges and grapefruits and lemons. And it's got a view over the rest of the house. I've got a view there. Mm -hmm. So welcome to our hotel home. And just to start, happy birthday, Ruth. You've Thank been a you wonderful so much. Part of our tribe. You've been a mentor and a support to me and a real blessing meeting you and having you in my life. And you're part of our doTERRA tribe, our mindful moment tribe, my feminine wisdom tribe, my speaking the truth tribe, my circle of wisdom tribe. And so I think there's lots of exciting times to come. So thank you for being such a wise woman. And there's so much that I learned from you. So thank you. It's been wonderful. It's been wonderful yeah. knowing you, Nikki, and the rest of the tribe. It's been absolutely amazing. Thank yeah. you for this opportunity. And mm. thank you for your wishes, your beautiful wishes. Oh. Thank you. Pleasure, thank you. And um, today, yeah, and if anyone else wants to join our, <laughs> well, you're already part of the Mindful Moment Tribe, and we've got a Speaking Out Truth Tribe and Circle of Wisdom Tribe, so please let me know if you want to, because they all tribe for all of us who believe in body sovereignty and, um, and honoring each other. And I think this is how we're going to survive um, our times is, is with our tribes. So, Today is also a very um, important and special day for me and for Colin because it's our 19th wedding anniversary. Wow. And um, mm. we just have been reflecting on our 19 years together and we've just moved into our fourth home. We had a home 54 Swaby Road, so there's a nine, 31 Oaklands Avenue, three and one in Isha. So Swaby Road was in Earlsfield um, in Southwest London. 31 Oaklands Avenue was in Isha. Forest, which so that's a three and a one. 72 Forest Road in Ander, which is number nine again. 13 in Greeny Road, Garlington. So again, the one and the three in Hilton. So I think a numerologist might have a ball with all those, those numbers. But mm. we've had three beautiful and precious children in that time. And we've had lots of adventures and ups and downs. They've been through it all. Um, but Carosa, you, Colin's meant to be on this. I don't know if he... Listening. <laughs> He's listening downstairs. <laughs> so, Carosa, you, you've been my rock and you've made me, you've supported me, you've made me laugh, you've held me when I cried. You've been my biggest supporter and fan and gave me courage and faith in myself when I couldn't see it. And, like, a perfect example of that was during our births. And I say they were our births because you were with me every moment of it. And I could never have done it without your love and support counting with me, breathing with me, encouraging, walking, singing, even kissing. That was the key <clears throat> in the last two births. And we worked out this morning that we are not even close to halfway yet. So I'm excited for the next more than half part of our journey. Um, yeah, so thank you, Carosa. And um, now you might want to pay special attention to the next part of this of this um, mindful knowing with your work in the stock markets and um, you might be in for a little bit of a bumpy ride the next few months and I'll be here to support you for you to walk with you and breathe with you and count with you and kiss you so the new moon <clears throat> is a waxing full moon it was a beautiful new moon although I go out now every morning and evening and most of the times it's misty so I'm missing seeing the beautiful stars and moon that we saw in Joburg so clearly um, so it's waxing to a full moon in Aries on the 9th of October. Aries, Aries is our warrior. Um, our, um, Aries shows a lot of resilience and a lot of strength and courage. 
And according to Pam Gregory, who many of you know I follow, it's going to be a massive few months. These last two months are going to be the crescendo of the year, this October and November. It's an intensity of and the coming together of the clash between the old and the new, the Saturn and Uranus square that she's spoken about so often that started in early 2020 when we had the intensity of the lockdowns, of the top-down control of the lockdowns and the COVID regulations and all that. And then the start of the people, Uranus, which is the people leading themselves, where people objected and people resisted and people did it their way. So there's been since the start of 2020, this huge clash between old and new, past and future, centralization and decentralization um, and financial turbulence. And the moment she, she forecasts a lot of financial turbulence, she says the last time we had things um, in the skies like this, I, I can't phrase it like she does, was September to December 2008. And we know what happened in that time. And she says we're in a waning square of the cycle that's been going on and it's a closing of the cycle. It's a closing of the old world. And so there's gonna be a lot of turbulence. And she says, even just this week, there or um, I don't, she recorded this on the 26th of September. So she just mentioned that it was the, the British pound dropped to a 51 year low against the US dollar. Um, and she says, that's just an epitome of it. And this tur turbulence in the stock market is likely to continue. So she says the main thing that we're going to be seeing is turbulence in money, wealth, currencies, investments, loans, mortgages, secret money, toxicity, betrayals, all that sort of thing, and that the stock markets and banks are going to be under a lot of pressure. And she says this is the closing of a cycle, and there's a huge revolutionary energy. And she says, look at places like Iran, where people are revolting. It's, it's not just a few people, it's, it's, the, it's, it's people in the streets revolting. So, um, yeah, watch her updates if you're interested in this. But thank goodness Mercury moved out of retrograde on the 2nd of October. Again, I've never really understood or believed in astrology. And in the last two years, it's the only thing, <laughs> not the only thing, but it's made a lot more sense and given me a lot more comfort and courage to continue. Um, and certainly Mercury retrograde, I realized, because even as soon as I moved into retrograde, which was, I think, the end of September. Oh my gosh, things got glitchy with technology and things like that. And luckily, it moved out of retrograde. And so life and technology should be getting less glitchy. And as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I think that part of the ESCOM stuff was also related to Mercury retrograde. So hopefully, we might see that improving. Um, yeah, so in the next two to three months, there's going to be an accelerated collapse of the old order. She talks about a breaking down to break through. And if this is um, in the stars, it's the biggest evolutionary change we've ever had. So she talks about don't focus on the obstacle, but focus where you want to get through to, where you want to go. So she says it's like that little exercise where you, you, where you break a plank. And you can't, if you focus on the flat plank and you're trying to smash it with your hand, you, you break your hand. When you're looking through beyond to where you want to, your hand to finish, that's when you can break the plank quite easily. So she says, we've got to keep knowing that this purpose of what's going on is to get us to a better place. And just to really hold that in our minds and in our hearts, that the purpose of this chaos is to get us to a better place. And she says we're going to see great assertions of power in the next couple of weeks, um, leaders, governments of the world, and we've got to be aware and discerning of what is true and what is not. Anyway, I haven't even listened to all of it, but I just felt like, oh my gosh, it's going to be a crazy time ahead. Um, and so with all this knowledge, what can we, we actually do? And all we can really do is to be. We can be present, we can be grateful, we can be kind, we can show up with love. So that's where we're gonna start our mindful moment. And if you have any oils, I encourage you to use them. I've been using more and more my, my ancient oils collection, which is a lovely one with oils from the, from the Bible, mentioned a lot in the Bible. So I put, when I meditate, I put frankincense on my thumb and my finger, and I put it on my palate, and between my eyes, my third eye, and I really inhale my frankincense, which is very grounding and, and calming and has the energy of a, a tree that is so rooted in a, in a desert, in a very dry area, in a very, very arid, very, very hostile terrain. 
and um, yet these trees are there and they are such healing regenerative trees they have such a, a huge energetic power to ground to heal to uplift so frankincense is one that I've, I've been using a lot and especially in this time of of move and change I've been having frankincense on my tongue or putting it under my feet also kapiba is another tree oil any of the tree oils are really grounding and calming and then I sometimes have a drop of so this is laurel leaf but or breathe or any of the uh, eucalyptus anything that opens up my chest and really helps me to focus on my breath before my, I do any of the meditation because our breath is so much of our key to to everything regulating our breath and then for those who are doing the blue tansy challenge of course i put that under my big toe which is that well of inspired action which we all need a bit of so i invite you just to um soften your gaze close your eyes drop your your gaze and just to be in this moment as i say be present be grateful be kind and show up with love and just as we allow this beautiful poem. So let me just show you this before we start. This is an ebook. It's free to anyone who goes onto her website. I just printed it out and had it bound at my local printers at Edlovo. Um, Julia Fehrenbacher, I will put her name below my on my website below the video when I post this. And um, she will not be quiet. Uh, the title really appealed to me. I don't know. I can't remember how I stumbled on it. I think Pascal shared with me one of her poems and I was so struck by it that I went onto Julia's um, website and um, she's got a couple of free ebooks and they are such beautiful poetry. So I encourage you to print, get them printed, download them, print them and use them to nourish you. So this, po this poem is Hold Out Your Hand. Let's forget the world for a while, fall back, fall back and back into the hush and holy of now. Are you listening? This breath invites you to write the first word of your new story. Your new story begins with this, you matter. You are needed, empty and naked, willing to say yes, and yes, and yes. Do you see the sun shines day after day, whether you have faith or not? The sparrows continue to sing their song, even when you forget to sing yours. Stop asking, am I good enough? Ask only, am I showing up with love? Life is not a straight line, it's a downpour of gifts. Please hold out your hand. Let's forget the world for a while, fall back and back into the hush and holy of now. Are you listening? This breath invites you to write the first word of your new story. Your new story begins with this. You matter. You are needed empty and naked, willing to say yes, and yes, and yes. Do you see the sun shines day after day, whether you have faith or not? The sparrows continue to sing their song, even when you forget to sing yours. Stop asking, am I good enough? Ask only, am I showing up with love? Life is not a straight line. It's a downpour of gifts. Please hold out your hand. So perhaps we want to rest our hands on our legs, on our knees, on our thighs, and open our palms to receive the downpour of gifts of this moment. Sitting in a posture that is upright, feet, legs, grounded on the earth beneath us. Tapping into the deep rootedness of the earth, of mother earth. 
of the great mother, mother nature, knowing how she sustains and nourishes all that is on her and in her and with her, including us. Tapping into the rootedness of these frankincense trees, the deep rootedness in the harshest of landscapes and able to create the most incredible healing resin. And then feeling the same pull towards the sky, towards the heavens, towards the sun of these trees as they straddle the nourishment of earth and the nourishment of the sky and the sun. Of the water that lands on their leaves of the sun that fills them, noticing how we too can take in this nourishment from the sun and the sky as we reach up with our head, our forehead, our shoulders, our neck, lifting gently towards the sky. Shoulders softening letting go of trying to control, just allowing ourselves to be in this time, to be present, to be grateful, to be kind to ourselves, as we've shown up for ourselves this morning with love. So feeling grounded and uplifted, between earth and sky. And then allowing our attention to move into our bodies. Drift down, perhaps gently scanning through your body from the crown of your head or from your feet, just slowly up or down. passing through your body, slowly noticing if there's tension or tightness, and perhaps just inviting a gentle softening, not going into that, perhaps just offering a few breaths of expansiveness into the area if there's tension or pain, not labeling it, not giving it a story, not giving it power, just noticing it and giving it the space of breath. Allowing that breath to perfuse through that area. Holding a few breaths and then moving on. And if there's an area that is hard to even connect with, then also pausing there and offering a few breaths of expansiveness into that area. And then continuing to move on, slowly scanning, gently breathing. And once you've scanned through, just directing your attention 
back to your heart space. Centering your breath and your focus on your heart space. Sensing the breath coming in and out of the heart space. Perhaps it has a color, a texture, a lightness. Like a channel of light or energy straight into our heart space. Perhaps it's gold or silver and sparkling. Perhaps it's red and nourishing. Perhaps it feels light. Perhaps it feels solid. Just noticing how the breath moves in and out of your heart space. And then inviting a feeling of gratitude into this heart space, into this breath, holding a feeling of gratitude for this moment, for your breath, for the nourishment of earth and heavens. And then inviting someone or people that you love, that you feel very connected to, that perhaps your family, children, even pets, those who are nearest and dearest to you, holding an image or a sensation of them in your heart space. Wrapping them in this feeling of breath and light. Not with words, but with feeling. The sensation of gratitude in your heart space. Tapping into this feeling of gratitude for them. And allowing it to envelop both them and you. Perhaps you feel it even enveloping your home. Bringing in sensation of home into your heart space. Whether your nearest and dearest are in your home or not, energetically bringing them in. And then perhaps inviting an image of someone who's having a difficult time, someone who's just experiencing a, a loss, a sadness. Perhaps it's a, a physical loss, the death of someone close, a financial loss, a loss of career, a loss of feeling of who they are. Someone who may need more support and love or some people, a number of people, and just holding them in your heart space in this time. Connecting them beyond words and offering in this moment the highest possible outcome for them from the situation. And clothing them with this cloak of love and gratitude and connection. Praying once again for the highest possible outcome for them. However that may look.
And then perhaps inviting the image or the sensation of someone that you've had a more difficult time with recently. Maybe there's been more difficult communications. Maybe there's been a big fallout. This can be anyone. Just whoever comes to mind or comes to heart. Just enveloping them. In whatever way you can. And if it feels very difficult, enveloping yourself in this feeling of love and gratitude. And offering up once again the highest possible outcome for you, you, for them, for the situation, for the relationship, however that may look. And then expand, extending this feeling of connection, of gratitude, of kindness and love to our communities, our work community, our school community, our village community, our city community. Tapping into this feeling and knowing that this feeling is can, we can ignite at any time. When we stopped at a traffic light and there's someone begging, connecting with this feeling in our heart space and praying for the highest possible outcome for them. When we are paying at a till, perhaps pausing and offering a moment of gratitude in our heart space and, and praying for the highest possible outcome for the teller, the packer, people we move past in our day, security guard, barista, our own staff in our own home. The people we see and work with every day and perhaps we don't really even know what's going on beyond the surface. Holding them in our heart space now and knowing that we can bring them into our heart space at any time during the day, in the days and weeks that come. Offering them a moment of connection, of gratitude, of love that they may not ever know about, but supporting them in ways that we, that are powerful beyond measure, that we can access very easily. And then allowing this sensation to extend beyond us into the screen, the names and faces on the screen, this community, uh, the communities. Praying for the highest possible outcome for each other. Holding each other with gratitude, whether we know each other or not. Gratitude for being here. Gratitude for the connection and support the community offers us. And perhaps if there's an image or a feeling of someone who arises in your thoughts, perhaps inviting them to a mindful moment next week so that they too can be included in our community. Let's forget the world for a while fall back and back into the hush and holy of now. Are you listening? This breath invites you to write the first word of your new story. Your new story begins with this. You matter. You are needed, empty and naked, willing to say yes, and yes, and yes. Do you see the sun shines day after day, whether you have faith or not? The sparrows continue to sing their song, even when you forget to sing yours. Stop asking, am I good enough? Ask only, am I showing up with love? 
Life is not a straight line. It's a downpour of gifts. Please hold out your hand. And so when you are ready, just allowing your eyes to open and refocus on the world around you. So you follow the sound of the bell back into the room, seeing the names and faces in front of us, the colors and light around us. And I wish you all a blessed and beautiful day, a blessed and beautiful birthday, Ruth, a blessed and beautiful anniversary, Rosa and I. And however you, whatever you're doing today, may we show up with love. Thank you for being here. And we'll see you next week. And the recording will be on the website if you want to share it with anyone. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to unmute. And um and say something or share. Um, but yeah, lovely to have had you here. Happy anniversary, Nikki, mm. to you and Colin. Oh, it's thank wonderful, you. Uh, that togetherness you can't replace in life. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joe. appreciate it. Oh, and our Spring Shed community. I didn't mention our Spring Shed community that Ruth is also part of, and we've so enjoyed all. And you're a part of two, and so many people on this are. Morning, Nikki. Morning, Ellen. Happy anniversary to you. 19 years, my goodness. I know. My, li my little firstborn niece. Or <laughs> well, my only yeah, niece, but my firstborn of my nieces and nephews. Oh, it's very exciting. It is. Thank what you. A what a journey you've had as well. It's been a, an amazing, amazing it time has. up until now. So. Mm, thank you. I know after doing that video for Forest Road, I mean, that was just our memories and our home. And I was yeah. struck by how privileged and blessed we've been. Mm -hmm. I love and that. It was beautiful that video. Oh, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've had some some happy times, and so many people uh, featured in it. So, yeah, I'm pleased you got to watch it. And all thank the best, you. Nikki, in your beautiful new home and everything thank that you. you need to do. I know how hectic it is, but thank enjoy you. your I'll, day today. I'll be back in Jobo tomorrow. We're traveling back tomorrow. Oh, wow. Um, we'll be back and then we're coming down here once or twice before the end of the year but we'll be back in Joburg from tomorrow in our flat so the next mindful moment will be from our apartment in Birdhaven mm. yeah okay Shane Mandy I'm sorry to hear that you've got laryngitis and upper respiratory tract infection but um, isn't, take it as a gift from the earth from the world from the God from the universe Look after yourself, nourish yourself, do the stuff that you would like to do today. Read a book or watch a movie and just nourish you. You give so much to so many people. And sometimes when we have laryngitis, it means that we have to bring our energy back to ourselves. We can't speak. So just use your energy for you. Mm. So mm, much love. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, La. Lovely to have you on the mindful moment. Oh, please do invite Bridget. That would be so lovely. Thank you all. We will Thank see you, you next week. Lots of love. Thank you. Thanks, Nicola. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Blessings bye with bye. everything you do. Bye bye. Thank you. And you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. It's so nice to have bye. you. Thanks.